sound is good. And uh, hi, everyone. I hope you still have a little bit of energy uh, because it's been a long day. Uh, my name is Matteo Mazzolini. I'm a data scientist with a background in mathematics and machine learning. And I joined CrowdSect two years ago as I believed um, they are putting forward a unique model. So it's difficult to hide it. My talk will be about CTI, that's the purpose of the talk today. Cyber threat intelligence is on everyone's lips, as you noticed, because like all the talk here are really diverse. But behind these names, like I think everyone has a different concept or naming about, about it. So as an, as an introduction, let's reflect together upon what are the keys which make a CTI uh, successful. What are the key properties? So let's take maybe one minute. No, I don't have enough time. So 10 seconds to think. Um, if you had to describe key elements in a CTI which make it performant, what would they be? Okay, time uh, is over. I asked this question uh, with my team, and these are the four most important things uh, which came up. So maybe it's not what you have in mind, and I'm really looking forward to discussing with you about it uh, after the presentation. But the most important one we came up with was to the CTI system should be reliable. It sounds obvious to everyone, but yeah, no one wants to take actions on false positive data. Second thing, it's as well ob obvious thing for us, it's the system should be up to date because you want to cover the most recent threat on the internet and you don't want to take action on data which are outdated. The second one is comprehensive and for me is uh, maybe the most uh, misunderstood, misunderstood and the most important one is because when you have a CTI system, you want to crowdsource your data from all over the internet, okay? And to cover the wide range of attack type you can have. So you don't want, for example, to have only your data source from Honeypot. Because what happens, then you will maybe get automatic attack, Benin attacks, but likely only the background, background noise on the internet. And on the other hand, if you source your CTI data from real machines, which have legitimate services exposed, which have a proper SEO referencement, you are most likely to get valuable information. As the last one, automated, yeah, because today we are developers, no one wants to deal with CSV, with text files anymore, we want APIs, we want industry standards, and for example, following uh, Mitre attack taxonomy is one uh, of the good things to follow. So, end of introduction, you might think all of these boxes, it's hard to, to check. Uh, that's true because like, for example, if you're a private CTI uh, feed, maybe you are reliable and up to date and automated, but maybe you're not comprehensive because we don't know how you source your data or you only crowdsource from Honeypot based. But let me introduce you to a model which tick all of these boxes. And this model relies on an open source software, which is CrowdSec. So this software is developed in Golang, and I will cover briefly the, 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 the functionment here, just so that you understand how the data is may, a, come up with. So it's released under an MIT license, and its operation is really simple. It's four steps. It acquires logs. Then it detects the malevolent uh, behavior based on attack patterns. And these attack patterns can be stuffing, brute force, DDoS, anything it's described in, in, in uh, scenario files. And you take, as a first step, you take an action. So, for example, you can no send a notification to your SOC team, or um, you can write a rule in a firewall automatically, or send a captcha if it's a web-based attack. And the fourth step is that the offensive IP is then shared with CrowdSec network. And the IPs are sorted 
and contextualized and rich and redistributed to the network in the form of the community block list. This process is fully automated and let's dive a little bit into how it's made. So the community block list is updated every two hours. It's made of roughly the 60,000 IP addresses and which represents the like the 0.1% most aggressive IPs which we see on our network. And these IPs are only the one reported by a large number of engines from a very wide part of the internet. So that's why we guarantee it's false positive free. And it comes with an expiration rule. So it's seven days, meaning that if after seven days you stop being reported, well, you go out of this community block list. And this ensures that we have um, data freshly renewed, 4% daily rate. And the system is automated uh, and fast enough to have a newly compromised asset uh, and the, which can end up in the block list in less than 40, 44 hours. Uh, we know that because we ran the experiment. We went to the machine on the internet, made like a simple password accessible. And then after three hours, it was breached. Four hours, the first watcher of the network reported it and so on. And after less than 24 hours, we had enough uh, watcher reporting so that the expert systems engine, which build automatically the block list, put it in there. So now I think if you remember uh, the three boxes or the four that I mentioned at the beginning. I think we can say that Quadsec uh, takes three of them. So it's a reliable system, up to date, and automated. But is it comprehensive? Yes, because it's run at scales. It's the largest IP reputation network. We have 69,000 active installations. We uh, they share tw 12 million signals daily from more than 130 countries over the internet. So these are the raw figures. 130 countries? Well, okay, this, <laughs> this, is, mainly, um, this is mainly for marketing purpose, I have to admit, uh, <laughs> because we are on the internet today, so we don't talk about countries. Well, what we talk about is IP addresses, it's IP ranges, it's autonomous systems, and well, it's very accurate because Quadsec runs on almost 3,000 autonomous systems. Most of them, uh, the top ones you can see on the tables on the left, you surely recognize uh, famous cloud actors. But what does it mean for you uh, as a business? It means that if you're hosting your services on these cloud actors, likely you will have already hundred or maybe thousands of Quadsec engines protecting, uh, running on these uh, cloud actors and reported IOCs which target these actors, meaning that the CTI and the information we have will be really uh, relevant for you. And lastly, to enhance the diversity, I would like to say, yeah, that we cover a lot of uh, different attack vectors uh, because we are, uh, Quartec is running on, on different platforms. Uh, you can see Debian, FreeBSD and uh, many Linux fly flavors and so on on Windows. And we have 150 scenario like at attack pattern which we cover and the community can build uh, many more. There are more 500 uh, available right now. So now we approach the second part of the talk. So now that we see we have a, re uh, we have described the CTI system we have, uh, let's see what we do with the data. So the most important part from a data science point of view. So level one, it's simple. We enrich and contextualize. Okay, this has been said in uh, many talks today. Um, but I would like to show you how it's done at QuadSec. So this is um, the, um, a screenshot made from our CTI webpage. You can find the address on the app.quadsec.net slash CTI. So we gather here uh, be the first uh, the first information is the behavior uh, reported by the community, and then we enrich the data with third party, um, like MaxMine for GIP or Shodan to 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 get more insight about uh, the machines 
And lastly, we use all the information from the community to build more context around it. So you see the activity level, for example, which is represented uh, with the like the GitHub-like uh, ties, which uh, or the bathroom ties. I don't know how you you call them uh, if you're not a developer, but um, it's um, it's the way to show uh, when was the IOC seen as the most uh, malicious. And we show most information about the kind of uh, machines it uh, targets. As a second level, we build indicators. So based on this enriched and contextualized data, we come up with uh, indicators. Uh, this one is the background noise score. What it does is that it's a score from 0 to 10, which represents um, if an attack is made in an automatic way from a wide range on the internet and without any specific purpose. And the goal of all of this is to reduce a lot of fatigue for the SOC team. And I think this is something I heard quite a lot in the presentation today, like how do we reduce the volume of IOC? Well, you can see on the, on the chart, uh, I think it speaks by itself. Like if you don't have the background noise filter, well, you have the purple bars. If you have it, you de you decrease your amount of IOC with the yellow bars. Another indicator that I really like, and it's uh, directly extracting from our, our latest majority report. So it's a report I will put a link at the end, but uh, we'll describe it briefly. Um, it's the malevolent duration. So basically, the idea was to how do we aggregate the CTI? Um, but not at the IP level, but at the cloud actors level, at the autonomous system level. And we want to, with this uh, methodology, to do two things, to witness where the threat occurs on which IS, and to have a way to compare them between each other. So for all this, you see two metrics on the blue bar chart on the right, the number of malicious IPs reported. Well, Amazon is uh, number one, but it's not a surprise, I guess, because it's hosting a very large amount of services on the internet. And the, but what's interesting is on the left, the red bar charts, this represents the average malevolent duration. So the malevolent duration for each IP reported average over all the IPs in the Amazon. And you see they are one of the, of the lowest. And this is, uh, yeah, one of the lowest, uh, which is about two days. And this is not a surprise, again, if you have ever rented a machine on Amazon, because you know that if your machine starts to do crappy things, like likely you will receive an email asking gently to, sh sh uh, to remediate it. And if you don't, they will remediate it for you. So um, from an attacker perspective, of course, it's interesting to run on low diligence cloud to avoid detection. From a business perspective, maybe choosing high diligence cloud services is smarter as you might get noticed more quickly by your cloud owner and get faster to address a potential security issue. First part. So now how do we move away from these indicators uh, to build a proper machine, a machine learning model? So the use cases are very um, are very wide. We have a lot of them. Uh, the first one is being classified an IP address if it's a VPN of a proxy. So I won't cover this one as it was already covered by Emmanuel. Uh, if you missed the talk on Monday, I encourage you to look at the to look at the replay. But uh, I will instead uh, look at other use cases under the specter of a graph uh, data structure. So this is a graph. The graph structure is really interesting because it's uh, it's easy then to address like problems like block list recommendation, IP similarity, or for example, botnet detection to check uh, community detection based on on uh, attack patterns. So how we, how do we define a graph? Well, it comes naturally as uh, what we call a bipartite uh, graph, meaning that you have two nodes of uh, different types, can be attackers or engines. And an attack is represented by a link, so an edge between these nodes. 
what you can do then in your database is you can attach some properties which you will use as features to this node. So say, okay, the attack was a brute force over SSH or this port was open. And this way to represent the data is really efficient. You don't um, repeat yourself and it will, it can be really fast to, to query if you want to know, uh, if you want to know which, uh, uh, the, what, what is the neighborhood of, uh, of an attack uh, in, in the graph. So for this, you can use a Cypher query language, for example, if your database supported it. So now we can easily, uh, on the use cases I listed before, we can map them with some classical uh, task uh, with graph, uh, with graph uh, algorithm. So um, I won't uh, describe all of them. I don't have time for, for it, but some are really interesting and the uh, community detection, for example, can be uh, done with uh, in an unsuper unsupervised way with uh, Louvain uh, algorithm. It's um, fairly easy to do. But what I would like to focus uh, the last is to, um, an algorithm I found really uh, interesting in node classification, which is graph stage algorithm. So um, it's a node classification uh, algorithm developed at uh, Stanford. And the, the interesting part of this algorithm is that it uses both the node features and the graph structures to compute uh, the decision. So you will sample, uh, in the training phase, you will sample uh, each node and take uh, a neighborhood around it. And you will then aggregate the features uh, from this uh, na neighborhood. And then you will uh, put this in a m machine learning model to predict the context and the label. And this method is really um, interesting because it's what we call an inductive method. And this means that you can predict unseen nodes. When I, see un when I say unseen, it's like unseen on the training phase, meaning that you can train your algorithm and then infer it uh, on, new, on, on new data, on new threats uh, as they come. We reach to the end of uh, my presentation now. Uh, here are the key takeaways. So um, QuadSec brings a novel CTI feed approach. It's based on an open source uh, software. And the CTI feed is reliable, up-to-date, comprehensive, and automated. And you can find the CTI uh, at this address, and it, contra it contains meaningful indicators like the background, noise, the background noise score or the VPN proxy classification, which I covered. And lastly, if you enjoy the analysis here, you can uh, scan the QR code and download uh, what we call so the majority report released recently. It contains uh, eight pages somehow of uh, diverse analysis uh, regarding IPv4 and IPv6, IS reputation, and the results of our VPN proxy classification. Thank you for listening for the presentation. I'm available for uh, question and discussing with you after. Thank you very much.